Today is Thursday, August 3rd, 2017. And you're listening to another episode of the Natural Living Homestead Podcast. I cannot believe it's August already, and summer's almost over, and the kids will be going back to school soon. I know. Where did the summer go? I don't know, and every day seems to go by quicker and quicker. I know. I think we got a lot of things done this summer. Didn't get everything done that we would have liked to have got done, but uh, it, I don't know. There's just not enough hours in a day, is there? No, but the summer's not over yet. That's true. We still have time. <laughs> Well, I think we'll give you guys a, a quick recap of last week. Now, last week, we um, that was the week that we took some time off, you guys, and we want to appreciate, we want to tell you guys how much we appreciate, you know, you guys sticking with us and staying with us. We had so much work to get down on the homestead um, that we just needed to stop videos for just a few days in order to continue the progress of everything that we were getting done on the homestead. Um, the, uh, the recap of last week, we kind of really started off with the last Sunday, the worst case scenario survival game. what do you think of that, that game, honey? It was pretty neat. Yeah, a lot of good questions in there. And one of the, one of our viewers made mention that we should definitely fact check a lot of those, those, uh, questions. He wasn't saying that. Um, or they weren't saying that the, the answers to the questions were wrong, but uh, definitely worth fact-checking to learn the facts of whether or not those things would work in that type of scenario. Right, and some of the answers were kind of silly. They were, weren't they? Yeah, embarrassing. You'll have to watch it if you haven't already. Yeah. And then Monday, we talked about our progress behind the barn, and Tuesday, uh, we did a video on fried eggplant. Oh, that was delicious. That was really good. Yes, it was. And then Wednesday, we did not get any footage of us actually working, but we had a full day with mowing and laundry. So Levi and I had to sit down and just kind of told you what our day consisted of. You guys were so busy that day, and it just, sometimes all you can do is just bear down and get the work done and film second. Um, it's hard to really sometimes get a lot of that, um, that footage while you're really trying to get hard work done out there. You know, you got most, of the, most of our property mowed that day, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Yep. With the rider. Yep. And the kids were mowing up with the push mower as well. You got another property in town mode, didn't you? Yes, we did. That took about two hours that day. So just it never ending. And then there was a big homemade meal that night, wasn't there? Yes, it was good. It was. So, um, I think next you wanted to talk about what the... Oh, the, the fact that we're making progress behind the, the barn. The range and the military course are coming along even farther. That's what you and Levi worked on today. It is looking really good out there. Um, it's hot and a lot of, uh, a lot of digging and... And, um, but it's, it's coming together. It's starting to look like what it's supposed to when we're done. I imagine that we're, we're probably halfway done on it right now and we got quite a ways to go. And we'll probably come up with other, other ideas of things that we want to do out there still. So we're anxious. We'll do a video on that in this coming week and show you where we're at now on the, the military course and the range. So then what else do you have there, hon? Oh, coming up. We still need to start the chick shaw. Have not started it yet. No, oh, you've been busy doing the other stuff. One of the ways that we sell the kids on the idea of what we do here on the farm is also taking time to do the things that they want to do. Not just the things that mom and dad want to do, but the things they want to do too. So that's why we take time out to build that, you know, a play area for the family, family there behind the barn. And we got some rain today, didn't we? A half an inch of rain. Oh my goodness, a half an inch. I don't even need a water today. Mother yeah. Nature did that, didn't she? That was she? nice. 
It was. We were watering until the rain came, and then we decided to just let the rain take over and turn off the hoses. Yep. So that was nice. Oh, we still have more canning that needs done. I have about 50 cucumbers on my counter that we need to can, and we're still heavy with tomatoes, so that'll keep us busy this weekend. I think we're going to try to can some other things too, aren't we? Yeah. That There's a Mrs. Wages chili base. We're going to try canning that and see what that's like. Of course, I'm looking forward to chili and hoodies and fall time and... No! No! <laughs> But it sounds good, doesn't I it? I don't like to be cold. She doesn't like to be cold. I'll put the hoodie on when it hits 32, okay? All right. All right. I'll probably wear a hoodie when it's 60. <laughs> she's no not joke. Lying. She'll put the hoodie on at 70. She's not. She's, she's kidding you. Mm -mm. So we got some things on the agenda for this weekend, which is canning. We're going to try to get the canning done of the cucumbers, get the canning done of the tomatoes, and what else? We need to we need to build the chickasha so we, that we can get the um, the americanas and the morans out of the barn. They need to go into the paddock outside. Yeah, we need to get the chickasha done. So we are going to try to do the chickasha on Sunday. That's the day that we're gonna shoot to get it done for. Um. Oh, we got done a lot of things in the house this this week too, didn't we? Yes, we did. Did a purge. Big one. Yes, yeah, so we got rid of about two truckloads full of just, just cr stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Call it what it is. It's just stuff. Just stuff out of the house. Uh, cleaned out closets and cleaned out, you know how you have boxes or totes with, and you're like, why am I holding on to this? Or why in the world do we have this? Or you move and you, you decide not to go through the boxes and you just let them sit in your closet forever. She's talking about herself there, folks. No. <laughs> okay, so that was me. He finally went through his boxes. Only about a half a dozen of them. I told him that was a good birthday present for me. Yes. He went through all of those boxes. Yes. Oh, but you did get a birthday present, didn't you? I found a really good deal at one of the farm stores. I found a pair of sloggers and I think we paid $15 15. for those. Yep, she got the green ones with the, it's kind of a turquoise that has the cow on it. Mm -hmm. And we also found a pair of muck boots and we only paid $30 for those. So I was so excited and that's my birthday present and I'm totally thrilled with that. Two brand new boots. And they're mom's boots. Nobody mom's else, boots. Nobody else wears them but mom. <laughs> so yep. it's hard to believe that my gal would be so, so excited about just a pair of boots. But she really is. I and, am. Very excited. Yep. Um, let's see here. What else do we have here? Um, well, Simon B. had sent us some questions. So we can try this like last time and I'll read the question and you answer it. Sure, that'd be great. Okay. Question one. It's been a while since you processed Mr. Pig. Do you plan on replacing him with another meat pig in the near future? Yes. I think we're going to replace him with four pigs. We're, we're late getting... We should have been growing our next pigs once we were processing Mr. Pig. But uh, we've been... We wanted to change the infrastructure of it and make it to where it was a little easier for us this time around. We plan on doing four pigs this time. We plan on, when we do, when we process the pigs, butcher them all at once that same day, have the, have the processing done, have it all put in the freezer, um, or slow, slowly move it from fridge to freezer, because it can be hard on your freezer to put a whole bunch of meat in there at one time that's not um, just warm meat. So we're, we're going to do our best to make sure that we can process four. I'm, you know, we've never done four. No, we did one. I know. Four will be quite different. I know. Maybe we'll have to do that in two days. What do you think? I don't know. I, I think four in one day seems pretty stretching it. I think so too. Maybe we'll have to do them two and two. 
If you guys have any advice on that, please let us know. Yes. So, yep, we are getting back into pigs. Okay, question two. You seem to generate a lot of eggs on your homestead, and I wondered if you also plan to add dairy via the, the goats or a cow in the near future. I'll let you answer this one, honey. Honestly, I don't want to do that. If she doesn't want to do it, I'm not going to push her to do it. Well, do I need to explain why? Sure. I think it takes a lot of time and dedication going out there two times a day. And I don't like goat's milk, so that would be a waste of my time. To me, I don't like to be cold. I don't like to be outside in the winter. And going outside to milk the goats in the morning and in the evening, that that's just not appealing to me at all. And if, if I'm not happy doing something on the homestead, then it's, you guys know what I'm saying, it's not enjoyable and it just takes all the fun out of it. Yeah. So we'll probably be doing um, a milk cow next year, I guess. I think a dairy cow <laughs> is... I, I think I would be much more excited about a dairy cow than, than the goats. I think I would like the, the cow's milk more than the goat's milk. But I also realize that's a, a huge step, taking on a giant animal like that. And we are... I think I'm the only one in the house that would eat goat's meat, right? I don't know. I've never had it before. Well... I think we can grow goat's meat pretty easily, um, and I know we don't. We could do that. We can just let the goats run dry afterwards, you know, and just try it. So we'll see. I, I don't have any real solid answers uh, on question number two here, Simon. I'm, I'm sorry, but um, I think sure there's a solid answer. I say no. You say <laughs> yes. Okay, so the answer is no. Question three. Okay. Are there any elements or strategy for your current homestead or future plans that you feel are unique due to you also being preppers? Hmm. You know, I thought about this question earlier and I thought I had an answer to it, but what do you think, honey? Well, we often talk about our um, food storage. Yep. And, and I think that that plays a huge role into also being preppers is having that food storage you know a lot of people don't realize that there may come a day where you're you know we live in the middle of nowhere there's one grocery store what happens if and then they run a just-in-time inventory by the way but what happens if something happens in this country to where a truck is not safe to go down the road to deliver the groceries how long would we have to live off of our own food supplies and our own food storages? I mean, I guess I don't ever want to be in that situation, but I want to be prepared for when that time comes. I, I've been to areas. I, I was in, I went to um, New Orleans right after Katrina, you know, and it was, it was different to see skyscrapers with plywood up in the windows and, you know, just lines wrapped around the block and then some for the homeless shelters because they were overfilled and uh the the stadium full of people down there and it's just can it happen yes it can absolutely happen can it happen if you're an hour away from any major city and uh there's been such a storm that that you're not getting to different places like you could be and you may be stuck at home for days upon time you know maybe half a week and you have to figure out do i have enough food in my house there's no power out there so we've lost everything in the fridge per se but then again too we have a backup generator and i think that with being a prepper is something that will never change is we have a game plan for our water at all times because our family needs it and our animals need it and we always have to have backup on our food for our animals you know, I, I think we live in such an advanced day and age that we wouldn't necessarily need to go a month off, but 
boy, I'd sure want to make sure that I had at least a week or two weeks worth of food and water stored up. And we do keep water stored up as well, too, don't we? Mm-hmm. Yes. But speaking of this subject makes me think we should go ahead and get that dairy cow <laughs> so that we can at least have milk on the property. Hey, Simon, thank you. Maybe we will get that dairy cow now. Um, you can also think about, uh, we do have a well, but to have a, what do you call the, the hand pump or how you get it out of there without electricity? Well, What's we also called? have the, we don't have a hand pump well. We have one for decoration on an old well. Right, but that, we should invest in something like that. Possibly. Um, I would actually just like to put another well somewhere out by the barn. <laughs> uh, a well that would knock out 40, 50 gallons a minute. That would so, be nice. Yeah, it would. You know, you try to get an, uh, an inch of water on an acre, that's 27,000 gallons of water. So, you know, you, it's hard to do that from, from a uh, three gallon a minute spigot. Mm-hmm. Any other ways that we would... No, I think that's kind of it. I mean, it covers the food, the water, and... Um, getting food, extra food stores set back for the animals and extra water set back. So, mm-hmm. hope that answered your question there, Simon. So, guys, feel free to leave comments in our videos, any of them. If there's something that you want us to talk about on the next podcast, leave a comment, just like Simon did there. Or send us an email. Our email address is www. Natural Living Homestead at gmail.com and you can also send mp3s you can send a small video as long as it's appropriate we'll play it in the next podcast thanks for joining us on our journey on a small farm